So I had some rose hips to put to use in a beer, so I decided on a beer with some honey character fermented with Philly Sour to give a little bit of tartness. This is my first time ever using Philly Sour or even making a sour beer. Well, let's get brewing. Well, thanks for stopping by. My name is Brent from Cascades Homebrew. So the homebrew club I attend, the Homebrewers of Western Loudoun, or Howl, every year they put on an event. It's a great event. It's a white elephant exchange for homebrewers. The basic idea is everybody brings an ingredient, they go into a pool, and just like a white elephant, you can either pick a new present or you can steal one from somebody else that had already opened it. Then, two months later, we come back and we sample the beers that people have made with their ingredients. So in my case, I came home with a three ounce bag of dried rose hips, something I'd never used before. So since I'd never used rose hips before, I really wasn't sure what to expect. I did some research online. Amounts varied from one pound to two ounces in a standard five gallon batch. So I saw a reference of a rose hip sour beer, and I thought that sounded kind of nice. So I went ahead and picked up a pack of the Philly Sour yeast. So Philly Sour is a great yeast for people like me that are not really into brewing sour beers because it doesn't really require any special equipment or really any special processes. Just like kind of a normal yeast that produces some sour characteristics during fermentation. So thinking about a recipe, so I got this Philly Sour to give some tartness, a little sourness to it. I've got the rose hips, which I'm not sure what they add. I think people say they may add a little bit of a tartness as well. So I thought what would go well with that, maybe some honey character. So I went ahead and put together a recipe based on those ideas. It turned out quite nice. Well, let's get into the brew day and I'll talk a little bit more about the recipe there. And then be sure to stick around while I give the beer a try and talk about how it turned out. So as I prep my grain bill, let me give a little bit of background to this recipe. So Lollamon has some great videos on their YouTube channel about using Philly Sour. My big takeaways and factors to help boost the lactic acid production and the sour character produced from Philly Sour was one, a fairly warm fermentation temperature, two, a reasonably high pitch rate, and three, adding some simple sugars into the recipe. They also provided some information on the base recipe they used from their lab trials. They used some flaked oats and flaked wheat, so I decided to add some of that to my grain bill. I then figured that some honey would provide some simple sugars, which might help boost the lactic acid production, and I had some honey malt around, which I thought might add some honey notes and complexity to the beer. So I'm calling this one a rose hip and honey sour. I brewed it back on December 2nd and then packaged it on January 7th. The batch size for this one was 2.6 gallons or about 10 liters. The bitterness was calculated at about 23 IBUs and the color was fairly light at 5.1 SRM. Looking at the key stats for this one, I calculate my recipe around a 70% efficiency targeting an original gravity of 1052, the final gravity predicted at 1007, which would have gave me a 5.8% ABV. I came in a little bit higher in efficiency. My original gravity measured at 1055, Final gravity was right on target at 10.07, which gave me a 6.3% ABV. So the fermentables for this one ended up being 70% pale malt, 10% flaked wheat, 5% flaked oats, 5% honey malt, and then 10% of honey. The hop additions for this one were pretty simple. They're heavily influenced by what hops I had around and what kind of looked good for the recipe. So I used two tenths of an ounce or six grams of magnum for bittering addition at 60 minutes. And then I had half an ounce of sauce hops at 10 minutes, just for a little bit of hop flavor. With 10 minutes left in the boil, I added a gram of Irish moss. And then at flame out, I added two ounces of the dry's rose hip, about 57 grams. I also added half a pound or about 227 grams of honey. I let those steep for a little while to try to extract some of the flavor and color from the rose hips. We'll see if it worked out. The yeast for this one was one package of Lalamon Philly Sour Yeast. I direct pitched the yeast into the port. So I set up a nice storage area near my lower level brewing area, but I've been brewing a lot more small batches here in my kitchen. So I created a checklist of the equipment I need to gather up so I don't have to keep running downstairs for one more piece of equipment. So after I weighed out and crushed my grains, I started to prep and heat my water. I added a little bit of gypsum to boost both the calcium and the sulfate, I also added some phosphoric acid. I was trying to hit a pH of 5.4, but as you see later, I actually overshot that. My meter wasn't calibrated, so I'm not quite sure where I came in with the pH. I also added half a cabinet tablet just to remove the chlorine and chloramines in my tap water. 
Once I heated my strike water up to the target temperature, it was time to add in the grains, making sure to give them a good stir. So this batch targeted 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 66 degrees Celsius mash for 60 minutes. At the 30 minute mark, I gave the mash a good stir and cooled down a sample for a pH reading. I had brewed recently, so I didn't bother calibrating my pH meter today. I did calibrate it later, so I think this reading may have been a touch higher than the actual pH. Also, I've been playing around with different pH models in Beersmith. I think I'm finding that the MPH model is the one that fits best for me. The value of my pH meter crept up close to 5.8, which is definitely higher than the 5.4 that I was targeting. I'm thinking the real pH may have been close to 5.7. Still a little high though, so maybe I should have added a little more acid to lower the pH. It would not really have impacted the mash at this point. With a sour beer, you want a lower pH of the final beer to drive the sour character. And if I brew this one again, I'll add some additional acid to the mash to lower the pH. I brewed this beer on December 12, 2021. So I turned on the news and I saw the devastating impact of some rare winter tornadoes that hit the Midwest of the United States. The damage was just incredible. So my thoughts go out to those that were impacted and are likely still rebuilding. At the end of the 60 minute mash, I moved my kettle over to the sink. I pulled out the grain bag and let it drain for a few minutes while I started heating the bulk of the wort up to boiling temperatures. Adding in the remainder of the wort got me right near my target pre-boil volume. Once the wort was up to a boil, it was time to add a small charge of magnum as my bittering hop for my 60 minute edition. With 10 minutes to go, added my small edition of saws hops, along with some Irish moss and yeast nutrient. At the end of the boil time, I turned off the heat. I then added my two ounces or 57 grams of dried rose hips. I also mixed in the half pound or 227 grams of honey. So I had never used rose hips before. As I mentioned earlier, I read a lot of conflicting information on how much to add and what character to expect. Based on some information, I was adding way more than needed. And some said I would need to add two, maybe three times more. I was hoping that I would get some character from this amount in a 10 minute steep, but looking back, I don't think this was the best way to get the character from the rose hips. After the 10 minute steep, I used my immersion chiller to get the wort down to pitching temps. Between the cool tap water this time of year and the pump that I used to circulate ice water toward the end of the chilling period, it goes pretty fast, maybe 12 minutes or so, and I'm ready to transfer into the fermenter. So I transferred the wort into my fermenter through this funnel and strainer. I find this strainer does a good job of filtering out the majority of hot particles. For this batch, it did double duty to filter out the rose hips. Should I have let the rose hips go into the fermenter? Would that have extracted more flavor? Well, I'm not sure. As you can see, there's still a lot of color in the rose hips. So I went ahead and pitched one full pack of Philly Sour into this batch. So I moved the fermenter into my fermentation chamber where I set the temperature to 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 degrees Celsius to start off fermentation. My gravity sample came in at 10.55. It seems to be a pretty color, wart, a light color, maybe just a touch of pink. I usually just take a pH reading during the mash, but this one I decided to take a pre-fermentation pH reading. My first reading was around 5.48. I then went ahead and calibrated my pH meter, and I got a reading that was around 5.35, so definitely a little lower. Lesson learned. I should always calibrate my cheapo pH meter on brew day. Fermentation on this one acted mostly just like a standard ale fermentation. Yeah, maybe a little bit slower just to finish up. After three days, I went ahead and boosted the temperature up to 76 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 degrees Celsius. I then let it finish out fermentation at this temperature. The next day, so day four of fermentation, I went ahead and took a gravity reading. This was partially to check that fermentation was progressing, but mostly to judge the rose hip character. I decided that the rose hip character well, was very faint, so I would add the remaining one ounce or 28 grams of rose hips. I decided to steep them in boiling water, figuring that would sanitize the rose hips and help extract colors and flavors. I then added the liquid to my fermenter. After one cycle, it seemed like there was still a lot of color and flavor left in the rose hips. I decided to do another round of boiling water and steeping. This time, I put more effort into squishing the rose hips and mixing them up. This seems like the best way to extract whatever colors and flavor are in dried rose hips. The second mixture was then added to the fermenter as well. 
It was not until day 26 that I got around to kegging this one. It was probably ready a little bit earlier than that, but fermentation was slowly moving along for a good two and a half weeks, and I always figure a little more time in the fermenter is better for most beers. The beer is an attractive color, and has dropped fairly clear in the fermenter, so I measured a final gravity of 1007. That would give me an ABV of around 6.3%. That doesn't include the dilution that may have occurred when I added that extra water with the rose hips. So I took a pH reading after fermentation. I'm far from an expert in sour beers, but my understanding is a sour beer will normally finish with a pH in the 3.0 to 3.5 range, with 3.0 being a more sour character. My reading came at the upper end of that at around 3.5, so I expect a mild tartness in this one. All right, so there is the beer. I know, you're saying, Hey Brent, why are you drinking such a small little glass of beer? Well, I guess I was enjoying the beer a little too much. Between filling some bottles to take to the share for the homebrew club, then also filling up a six pack of bottles for a homebrew share going on later this week. So yesterday was the Super Bowl. I was getting together with some friends. I thought it'd be cool to fill up some of these glass bottles with the sour beer and take it over. For people kind of that like to drink wine, I thought it might be something different that they would like. Well, I sanitized a couple bottles and got ready. And I got half a bottle filled and thought, oh, I still need to drink some of that for the video. So I went ahead and flushed the headspace as much as I could. I set it aside. So it might be a little flat, but it seems like it's in pretty good shape right now. So starting with the appearance, it's a beautiful color, a nice golden. Is there any red from the rose hip? Uh, I'm not sure. It may have added a little touch of color to it. Definitely not red. Definitely not even really any pink to it. But nearly a nice golden color. If we go in for aroma, I get some of the typical sour kind of aroma, that kind of sweet, tarty kind of. Do I get any ro rose hip aroma? I'm not quite sure about that. What about honey? I know in this case I've got honey and I got honey malt in it. I mean, I do think since I know they're in there and I'm looking for them, it does have some kind of hints of a honey character. So then as far as the flavor, it's got a lot of complexity to it. I really like this beer quite a bit. I'm not sure it's the best wintertime beer. It'd be a great refreshing summer beer. So I get some sweetness up front. I get a little bit of a tartness to it. It's not an overly sour beer, but there is definitely a, a sour note to it. I get some complexity of the grain bill as well. I'm not sure 100% what if that comes from you know, the base grains versus the oat and the wheat or from the honey malt or the honey that's added. You know, typically, anytime I've added honey to a beer, I really don't get honey character in it. But I could say that there's a little bit of a honey-ish character, a note of a honeycomb kind of character. There's also this really nice, maybe a touch of a kind of a biscuity, kind of bread crusty kind of uh, grain note that's really nice. So I would say this is just a really nice drinking beer. So what are some of my closing thoughts on this beer and Philly Sour? Well, I was really impressed with the Philly Sour yeast. For somebody like me, that's not a huge fan of sour beers. I do enjoy sour beer some, but sometimes there's a fine line between a good sour beer and a bad sour beer. So as a home brewer, I'm not sure I really want to devote a lot of equipment and a lot of work to making sour beers. But in this case, Philly Sour required no special processes. On the other hand, using like bacteria and brat requires a lot of work or special equipment, requires a lot of time to mature. So a, a kettle sour is something that kind of appeals to me just because you don't have those microbes around to deal with after the boil, but it still requires some special time and equipment and some thoughts and process. It might be something I try at some point, but this was pretty easy to do. It just fermented like a normal beer. So what about rose hips? Uh, I don't know what rose hips add to this beer, and I'm not sure I'd really be that crazy about adding them to something in the future. I mean, I really got minimal flavors and colors from rose hips in this beer, but looking back, I mean, definitely the recommendation for two ounces in a full-size batch, that's way too little. You would never get any character. In this case, I added the full three ounces to a two and a half gallon batch. But I think if I steep them or crush them up, if I steep them in hot water, boiling water for a long time, and then when I, when I was mixing them, kind of smashing them, I was seeing I was getting some of the color or some of the character. I think if I had done that with the full three ounces, we might've got a little bit of color. We might've got something we could actually recognize as rose hip flavor. But again, I'm not sure I'm gonna go on my way to brew a rose hip beer. And then as far as the recipe, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I think it's a really nice base beer. I do think there's some grain complexity, a little bit of hints of honey. I think it would be an excellent beer either brewed exactly as it was, probably without the rose hips, 
So I also think it would be a great refreshing summertime beer, maybe with some fruit thrown in in a secondary fermenter. So that would be something I'd be interested in making. Even if it's not my favorite beer, I think it's something other people may really enjoy, say for a party or something. So if you like this grain to glass video, make sure you check out some of my other grain to glass videos. And also check out this video and make sure you subscribe. That way you can find your way back to my future content. And if you do brew this beer, let me know. Cheers.